this morning I want to talk with you about the Good Samaritan. And I'll be honest with you, as we were traveling this, this last week, uh, Wednesday night we went to a, uh, a church there in, uh, in Florida, and the Bible study for Wednesday night was uh, discussing the Good Samaritan. And I got to thinking about that, and you know, I've read, read through that many times, and I thought, well, I think I'll preach on that this Sunday, so here you are. And I uh, don't believe it'll be a long sermon, but, but you never know, do you? Uh, as we think on the Good Samaritan, let's, let's just start out and let's just read the account. It is uh, uh, one that we can pull quite a bit out of as we... As, as we study. So let's, let's start out uh, at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanting to justify himself, said Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave, him, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Now there's so much in this so much in this lesson. As we, as we begin there, looking at the, uh, the first few verses that we read, you know, this is a, a lawyer stood up and tested him. You know, this is a man who knew the law. And how does Christ respond to him but asking him to recount the law? You know, ask him, what is your reading of it? He gives the right answer, but then you notice there it says, in seeking to justify himself. Now, what might that mean, that he was seeking to justify himself? When we think about our lives and we think about the things that we do, you know, many times uh, we a attempt to justify our own actions by searching for a way, a loophole, to be able to justify those things that we, that we normally would find ourselves doing or that we enjoy doing. Those things that perhaps are questionable, uh, if we have uh, involve ourselves in an activity that, that we're not quite sure of, uh, sometimes we put up the fight and we try to justify ourselves. I know that in uh, time past I've done that, probably do it again because I'm human. But as we, uh, as I think back, the, uh, the preacher that shared the gospel with me and, and got through my head, uh, you know, I, I fought to justify. I fought with him to justify the things that I had done, to justify why I should be considered to be saved. And uh, he fought through that with me, bit by bit. And as I tried to justify myself, I finally came to the realization that, you know what, he's got a point here. This, what I've done, doesn't match up with the scriptures. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, this uh, account that Jesus 
gives to him. This, and it's so within Christ's character as we see he always, it seems like he always tells a story. He, al- he always tries to relate something, uh, give us information in such a way that we can relate to it. And we can env- envision ourselves, we get a picture in our head walking down that street. Perhaps in our culture, we maybe envision driving down the road. And how many times have we found ourselves in a situation where someone was in need on the side of the road and we maybe move over and go around them, get, keep some distance because you don't know what's going on. You have, you have all the, the stories, as we mentioned in the Bible study. I told you this, the things we were talking about in the Bible study sort of related to this lesson here today. Uh, how many times have we turned on the news and heard about someone who, who was, quote unquote, being a good Samaritan and uh, befell some trouble because of, their, because of their decision? Those that perhaps have picked up a, a person in need on the side of the road, a hitchhiker, and taken them somewhere and the hitchhiker ends up robbing them. You know, those things do happen and we have to use our sensibilities. But nonetheless, we have to do just what Jesus told this man to do, to consider our neighbor and to uh, uh, love our neighbor as ourselves. As it was, as the, the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your might and your neighbor as yourself. Now the Lord is first. And when we love him, we're going to do the things that he's asked. We're going to look into the scriptures to find out what it is that he's asked asked of us and then make sure that we do that. And, And asking us to love our neighbor as ourselves, you know, which one of us, you know, doesn't take care of ourselves. When we're hungry, we feed ourselves. We take care of our bodies. And and with with that, we also need to think about our neighbor. And he, you know, justifying himself asking uh, about who his neighbor was. You know, those that we come into contact with, that's the the simple point there. Those that we come across, those are our neighbors. They don't have to have bought property next to ours to be considered our neighbor. You know, as we look into this account of the Good Samaritan, we get a little glimpse into human nature. We get a little glimpse into how our minds work and how we handle certain things. You know, when you think of the priest, the first person in the account that that passes by uh, this person who is left for dead. In verse 31, Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. You know, the, the priest would, in our minds, perhaps be the one that is most likely to stop and help. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think that a person who is versed in the Word of God, who studies the word of God would be one that would have that same compassion that, the, that God had on us? You'd think that that connection would be made. But he crossed to the other side and avoided this person. Now, to give, to give him a little break, realize, as we've already mentioned, re- realize that it is in our human nature to be such, to... Uh, as we look upon others, we, we think of ourselves and we think, well, I don't want to get involved with that. That looks like a mess. That's going to take too much time. Oh no, look how bloody that person is. I don't want to get my clothes dirty. You know, we think of all sorts of reasons why we shouldn't help. But, uh, you know, the, the priest, as, as we think about who the priest was, Uh, as far as their vocation, as far as their lifestyle, so far as their knowledge, they should have been the most likely to help. I mean, think of the Levite. 
And in verse 32, likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. And he did the, the same thing. He did the very same thing that, that the priest did. You know, and uh, the Levite, the Levites were among the educated uh, workers of God as well. They, they did the things in the temple, the, the day-to-day duties inside the temple. They, much like the priest, you know, they, they should have known better. Uh, the, the Levite should have known better than to act in such a way. But I think that it's still true today that in the religious world, we, we like the sanitary uh, way that we can go about our lives. We come in uh, to the services and, and there's, you know, thankfully in many ways, there's no confrontation when we come together. Uh, once in a while, maybe you'll find someone who, who uh, may come, in and come into an assembly and, and ask questions for the purpose of derailing study. You know, I've seen that happen before. I've been places where um, somebody's come in and started screaming uh, in the back because of uh, what the preacher had preached and it, it, it hit a nerve with somebody. And uh, one in particular, the preacher had a radio show and he had said something on the radio show that really hit a nerve with somebody and he came in the door screaming and yelling and ranting and raving and, and the men had to remove him from the building and call the police. Uh, it was, uh, uh, th- those things happen. And because, and because we are uh, kind of averse to that kind of confrontation, we, we, we shy away from situations where we might ruffle some feathers. And sometimes maybe that's wise, but we need to pick and choose our battles. We need to, but most of all, remember what the Lord has charged us to do. And uh, the Levite and, uh, and the priest in their day uh, should, have, should have been those that you would think would, would step up. But who stepped up but a Samaritan? And if you know anything, if you've ever heard anything about Samaritans, uh, it is often mentioned that they were thought of uh, as kind of, a, kind of a half-breed, a lower-class citizen. Uh, they, they weren't looked upon uh, very well by those around them, uh, the Jews especially. The Samaritans were, a half, were half Jew, half Gentile, and this is something that, that offended the, those that were up on their high pedestal uh, within, within the Jewish uh, faith. And they, they, uh, they weren't looked upon well. They weren't treated well. And of all the people, and remember who, who Christ is talking to here, he's, he's, uh, he's, kinda, he's talking to these very same people that should have known better uh, throughout the time that he, that he is on this earth. And this account really probably struck a nerve with them because you know the priest who should have known better, the Levite who should have known better, they passed by, but, but the Samaritan went and did the right thing. And uh, it, it lends to what we were talking about earlier today in, in our study of the 12 apostles, that each and every one of those people is, was different. They had different abilities and, and, and uh, things that they could lend to the work of the Lord to get the job done. And uh, as we see here, the Samaritan, being one that was looked down upon, wasn't, wasn't looked upon as someone who had any part in doing anything good uh, among popular culture, at least amongst the Jews. The Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. And if we look at John 4, at verse 9, we read, we, we read uh, something that confirms that for us. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you... Being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And so this is uh, Jesus at the well with this Samaritan woman, and asked, he asked her for a drink. And just the very fact that he would talk to her was something that was off-putting. 
Uh, so, so we see there that uh, how the Samaritans and the Jews interacted with each other. The Samaritans were downtrodden and, and didn't expect that the Jews would even speak to them. And uh, that was something that, you know, that rattled the cages of those in this, in this time. Christ spoke to those that otherwise would have been forgotten by society. And this account of the Good Samaritan remembers, uh, helps us to remember that we also shouldn't forget those that are perhaps in a situation where they have no way out. Perhaps, you know, you know the, this, this man was robbed and left for dead on the side of the road without clothing. And uh, this Samaritan understood that if someone, if anyone could help, you know, he was right there. Why not him? And he took this person in and, and uh, helped to bring him back to health. And not only that, but he left money behind so that if, as the person continued to get well, that the innkeeper wouldn't just kick him out. And, uh, you know, sometimes we see things like that and we think, well, that's just, that's just not fair. You know, the, the man who was robbed on the road should repay this person. Oh, we don't read anything about that. We just read about a person who was willing to give of themselves, give of their time, because it obviously probably took him some time to get him out of where he was and bring him into town, you know, putting him on his own animal, but probably had to go a little slow, probably had to take care in moving this person, and uh, undoubtedly took some time out of his day. You know, we live in a society today where time is money, and we tend not to want to give up any of that time. You know, we, we get frustrated when we have to um, uh, take some time and do something uh, that, that we don't necessarily want to do. We live in a society where we are so comfortable and we are able to do as we please most of the time. And we get used to that. And that lulls us into a, a place of not caring. You know, just, just looking around and not, having, not taking care of uh, with those around us. You know, the Samaritan went above and beyond to help. Nobody would have expected him to go to the degree that he did to help out this person. But as we, as we read uh, in verse 35, you can, you can begin to read there and remember that that's when he left money behind with the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Now again, that was just the right thing to do. That was the thing that, that had to be done because that person didn't have money to, to pay for their own way. And he didn't expect others to just step in. He didn't walk away and say, well, someone else will step in and take care of him. I've done my part. He followed it through to the end. And that's something that each of us can take in and think about as we go on to this next year, Lord willing, of our lives. You know, we, we are coming to the end of, of, of 2021, and uh, we, we will be entering this new year. And, and within this week, people are going to make all sorts of promises to themselves about the things that they will do in this next year. Uh, common among those being to lose weight or to exercise more or to, to do, do all sorts of things. But maybe one of the things we should think about is I'm going to think about my neighbors. I'm going to think about those that I come into contact with. And, and maybe they're not bloodied on the side of the road, but perhaps they're in need of the truth. Perhaps they're in need of someone to take some interest in them. And uh, understanding that you might not just in one sitting be able to convert them, but to form a relationship with them, to be able to, to sit down with them and have them come to the feeling of trust with you, that you might be able to share the gospel with them, that it might sink in, that it might do what it's sent here to do. You know, the word of God, as we know from the scriptures, is able. It will do its job if we only do ours. 
and put it out there so that others can hear it. You know, how is it that any of us are sitting here today? How is it that any of us are sitting here today with this hope of heaven after a while? It's because somebody, whether it be perhaps our parents or perhaps someone else, took the time to go above and beyond and share the gospel with us and to take an interest in us individually. Now that's the same thing that the Good Samaritan did. Again, as we try to be independent people, you know, human nature takes a hold of us, we, we tend to shy away from those hard situations. Myself, I can improve in this, in this way. One of the, the reasons that I brought forth the lesson, you, you, nobody learns more than the preacher when they're putting the lesson together. And as, as I uh, was thinking about these things, and as I heard uh, some of these very same things last week, uh, it, it, it stuck with me. And it's something that I can improve upon, and each and every one of us can in some way. So that's the point in bringing those things out. I hope that as you look through this account of the Good Samaritan, I hope it's been edifying to you. I hope you can take something away from it that is helpful in your lives. Hopefully, as we continue to study to show ourselves approved, as we continue to work each and every day looking forward to that hope of heaven, we can do a little bit better. We can do uh, much like the Samaritan did and help others, if not physically, at least in that understanding of what must be done in order to have that hope of heaven after a while. If there's anybody here today that is not in Christ, why wait? You know, if you're sitting here today and you have not put on Christ in baptism, as Acts 22.16 says, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Today you've heard a little bit of the word. Romans 10.17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you hear and you believe that Christ is who he says he is, you have that belief that faith grows in you. And just, just like the Ethiopian eunuch stated, you know, I believe that Christ is the son of the living God. We repent of our sins. We turn away. You know, as, as we think back to the account of the Ethiopian eunuch, he went on his way rejoicing. Why would he have been rejoicing? Because he now has that hope of heaven. He has a new focus in his life. You know, if we are to uh, establish within ourselves a belief by our study, by our looking into the word, we begin to believe that Christ is who he says he is, why would we not do what he wants us to do? And repent and turn away from those things that had formerly separated us from the Lord. Not, and we also must not be afraid to confess him before men. And then, most of all, remember that in each of these accounts where, where, where one is saved, they are baptized, buried in the waters of baptism, raised to walk in that newness of life. If you're baptized, sprinkled, even if you're immersed, but not for the remission of sins, not, not having heard the word of God and understanding Christ. You know, Philip when he got in the chariot with the Ethiopian eunuch, what did he do? He preached Christ to him. And out of that came the understanding of what must be done. And baptism was a part of that. Baptism for the remission of sins. Do you need to do that today? Then the waters behind me are ready. We can make that happen. If you've done those things, but you find that perhaps your life reflects the priest or the Levite in the account that we, that we talked about. Perhaps you've, you find that you've gone astray, you've lost focus on Christ. You've lost focus on what must be done in order to be pleasing in the Lord's sight each and every day. If you've gone astray, if you've allowed sin back into your life, you need to get back on the straight and narrow don't wait another day. We, uh, our family here, we are uh, the church, we are family. You know, as I traveled this, this week, 
You know, I traveled to a place where, and there were some people there that I knew, but many I didn't. But I'm always struck by how when I travel and I, 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 I seek out the Lord's church and I assemble with them, that I have a built-in family wherever, wherever that is. We have a family amongst the, the Lord's people. We have our local family right here, and we, that's what we are here to do is to build each other up, to be a support to one another. So if any of us needs the prayers of the saints, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help. We're here to build each other up and make sure that each and every one of us gets to heaven after this life is over. So whatever your need may be, if you're subject to the invitation of Christ or you need the prayers of the saints, please come forward as we stand and we sing. Pray, pray.